Now, where is that Nandex? Hell, I'd even take the JR programmer. How am I supposed to model 360 without a NAND flasher? A Pico? This video's featured comment is brought to you by Tyler TT, who said, You took that from the streets and made it a fine piece of ass. Thanks for your comment, Tyler. Indeed, that PS2 was made into a magnificent piece of ass. If you'd like to have your comment showcased, be sure to subscribe and leave one down below for a chance for it to be featured in a future episode of Video Game OR. Now, on to the video. Hello and welcome back to the Video Game OR, the series where we show you the process in repairing and restoring all things gaming. Recently, the ye old Nand X was made obsolete with the introduction of the Pico Flasher. Today we'll go over how to take a Raspberry Pi Pico and turn it into an Xbox 360 Nand Flasher. So without any further ado, let's begin the procedure. First things first, you'll need to take a little adventure to this video's description and pick up a copy of the Pico Flasher's UF2 file, as well as the latest release of JRunner. Once downloaded, you'll need to connect your Pico to your PC. While doing so, be sure to hold down the Pico's boot cell button. This will give you access to the Pico's bootloader. From here, simply take your UF2 file and copy it to the Pico. Now your Pico should be all ready to read and flash the NAND. Pretty easy, huh? But before we celebrate too soon, let's see if it's recognized by JRunner. Create a new folder on your desktop and call it JRunner, then copy the zip file from earlier to your newly created folder. From here, simply extract the contents of the zip into the folder and promptly banish the archive to the NetherRealm. Then open JRunner by right-clicking and running it as an administrator. You'll know that the Pico is recognized by JRunner if you see the Pico Flasher logo on the main window. When it comes to connecting your new NAND flasher to your Xbox's motherboard, you have a few options. If you're only planning on flashing one motherboard type, then you can wire directly from the Pico to the console. However, if you want the option to flash any board with ease, then you'd want to solder headers onto the Pico and use a set of male-to-female DuPont wires. Now, depending on what type of motherboard your console has, you may need to use a different set of I.O. pins on the Pico. If you have a Xenon, Zephyr, Opus, Falcon, or Jasper motherboard, you'll be using pins 21 through 27 on your Pico. Then you'll need to wire those pins to the corresponding points on the console as shown. If you have a Trinity motherboard, then you'll be using the same pins on the Pico that were used for the FATS. However, they'll need to be attached to the following points on the motherboard instead. If you have a Corona motherboard with a 16MB NAND, then you'll need to make sure that there's a 0 ohm resistor on the R2C10 pads. If not, then simply bridge the pads together before trying to read or flash the NAND or else it will not work. Then use the following wiring diagram for connecting the Pico to the console. If you have a Corona motherboard with a 4GB NAND, you'll also need to verify that there is a 0 ohm resistor on the R2C10 pads. And if not, you'll need to bridge those pads before reading or writing to the NAND. For this motherboard, you'll be using pins 9 through 13 and pin 27 on your Pico wired to the console in the following configuration. And with that, you should be all ready to read and write the NAND on your Xbox 360. So if you enjoyed, remember to leave a like and subscribe as to not miss anything new from the video game OR. Also, feel free to leave a comment on what you'd like to see covered for a chance for it to be featured in the next episode. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.